as everything is almost connected, and anybody can theoretically access anything, security measures need to be implemented to control who can access what, and what they are allowed to do once given access. One of the most essential security measures is having a firewall in place. To simplify the concept of a firewall, assume that you want to protect your home, and control who goes inside or outside. A very simple solution to do so, is using a door that could be locked. Firewalls operate almost the same way. A company owner, or a computer owner, can use a firewall to control who can access their systems from outside, and who can access outside systems from inside. The use of a firewall is to protect one's assets from being modified, stolen, or damaged. A firewall can be a software that is installed on an operating system, or a device that is placed at a position in your network, where it would be capable of controlling the flow of data. The firewall that sits on your device is normally called a host firewall. While the firewall that could be its own separate device or appliance is called a network firewall. The functionality however is the same, which is to control the flow of data. So how does a firewall work? To be able to allow or block data traffic, a firewall needs to be able to identify it. The first method to do so, is by identifying where the data is coming from. This is achieved by looking at its IP address. A firewall is capable of knowing if data is coming from inside or outside your system or network. Someone might argue that, if the data coming from outside is blocked, then how would we be capable of viewing a website, or watch a video, or download any file? The distinction to be made here is that, data initiated from outside is the data that is blocked, and not data that is coming back in response to our initial request. This ability is offered by a stateful firewall, which is available in almost all firewalls around the world nowadays. The firewall records all the states of a communication going through it, which allows it to tell where the data is being initiated from. Aside from IP filtering, a firewall can filter data by looking at the port it is using. Data is sent and received on specific ports, for example the port used for web browsing is different from the port used for email communications. More advanced firewalls are capable of filtering data based on the application it is using. Normally applications are run on specific ports, but sometimes an attacker might try to hide his traffic on a different port to bypass the firewall. An application firewall is capable of identifying an application data regardless of its port. Here, we can have a look at the firewall application that comes by default with Windows operating systems. It can be accessed at the bottom left corner in the network and sharing center. There are many configuration options available here. We can enable or disable the firewall, but it is recommended to always leave it on. You can check the status of the firewall here, which shows that it's on. We can also allow or deny applications from communicating through the firewall. You should be very careful to what applications you want to allow. Advanced settings can be accessed to change the access rules on the firewall. There are inbound rules controlling data coming in, and outbound rules controlling data going out. The rules that you currently see are there by default. You can see many details here, such as the connection names, the protocols used, the ports used, and the source and destination addresses. It is possible to add our own new rules, but it is not recommended, unless you really know what you are doing. So be careful. Further topics to explore from here include, web application filters and proxies, intrusion prevention systems, mail filtering systems, and many other network security technologies. Stay tuned.